So recently content warning added Steam Workshop support for mods, and I haven't seen a lot of information about how to make mods and upload them to the workshop. So it can be especially confusing if maybe you don't know a lot about modding or programming. So hopefully if you have an idea of like a tweak of the game you want to make, uh, this tutorial should be easy enough to follow. So they made this GitHub page that explains how like there's an example mod and how to upload it to the Steam Workshop. And I'll be referencing this um, throughout the video. So if you want this, here's the link I'll put it in the description. So we're going to be trying to make a low gravity mod. Uh, we need two things to start. You need Visual Studio, which is free. It takes a little bit to download, but once you install it, you'll also need, um, it'll pop up to asking you for things you want to download for it, and you need the .NET framework. You also need to download ILSpy, this program here, uh, and this lets you decompile the game code, but we'll see more about how that works later. All right, so we're gonna create a new project, Visual Studio. So you want to make sure here at the top you have C sharp checked and then you also have library checked. And then if you scroll down a little bit right here, class library, a project for creating C sharp class library. So this will give us the DLL file we need. Come up with a cool name for it. So low gravity. So we're in here and this is our blank code. There's nothing going on here. Uh, we need to add quite a few references. And then if you go to content warning, manage and then browse local files you get this and then you could go to content warning data and then uh, I think it's managed yep and then in the managed folder so this is the directory you want so if you go to references right click and then add reference and then you could click browse and then you'll want to paste paste this in right here. There's a few select ones you need. <laughs> so zero harmony.dll you want to select. And then you also want to select unity engine.core module.dll. And then all of these Zorro files you also want to select. So go ahead and click add, and then they should all show up here, which is perfect. Sorry, you also I want to add another reference. Click on browse, and then the assembly C sharp file you also want to add. So this adds everything over here. Uh, it might not make a lot of sense right now, but in a second it will. You probably, we have this, but we don't know what code to write at all. <laughs> so we have to look through the actual game code in order to figure out what to modify and how to do it. So you want to open IL Spy, go to open. So here uh, you'll have to navigate to content warning again, but then you go to content warning data, managed, and then this assembly C sharp file you'll want to open. You should see it. It looks like this on the side tab. Um, there's a lot happening, so but don't worry, it's okay. So if you go up here to window and then search, you'll get this window right here. So depending on what you want to modify in the game, you could search for it. So if you want to modify the flashlight, all you have to do is search flashlight. And then you want to look for uh, the object. So it'll look like this with this little symbol. You can double click it. And then this is all of the code for the flashlight. So a uh, brief overview. The way that you uh, make a plugin and modify this code is you find this. So you'll tell the program that you want to modify like this method or function and then you kind of append the code you want to add to it at the end of it. Um, there's other things you could do. You could also add it to the beginning, but um, most of the time it's easier if you just add it to the end, depending on what you're trying to do. So something like this for the update function, this will run every single uh, frame of the game. So every time the game updates, and so if you add something at the end of this uh, function here, then you'll be able to run code every single time um, the flashlight is updated. <laughs> All right, so the thing that we are looking for for our low gravity mod is the player controller. And it's right here. So you'll see here's a bunch of variables. Uh, you know, there's your stamina. So if you want to modify your stamina, you could do that. 
but here's what we want is our gravity so we just need to kind of pay attention to this and since we don't uh, we could update it on start but generally that gives some issues with unity for some reason um, especially if there's like multiple people in the lobby it doesn't really know what to do so if we run it in update then it will just set the gravity um, every single frame no matter what so if something happens and the program modifies this value no matter what it will uh, revert back to the value we want all right so there's a few a few things we need to get out of the way to make this uh, kind of work <laughs> so we have our namespace at the top uh, you need to add this line here content warning plugin so this is going to tell the program some basic information about your uh, plugin or mod that you're making so uh, the first thing we want to enter here is our name so low gravity mod or just low gravity that's fine and then you want to enter the version number uh, which is also a string so 1.0.0 and then Uh, next, it's this thing called vanilla compatible. Uh, this, I guess, doesn't really matter, but false for now. Immediately after this, we have to bring our class back. So this little bit here, you need um, just to initialize the plugin and get it started. So we could write a message to the console that we might not actually see, but oh, what the? If you've ever used Unity before, uh, you'll see some of this looks familiar, like debug.log is from Unity. And it's actually giving an error because it has no idea what we're talking about. So if you right click, go to quick actions and refactoring, you could say using Unity Engine. There you go. <clears throat> so since our mod is loaded, we could say load gravity mod has loaded. Cool. So now we get to actually modifying the game. So uh, like how we did up here, which uh, just kind of gives some information about our plugin, we need to give some information about the stuff that we're modifying uh, through this thing called Harmony, which I guess is kind of like interface. I don't know. I don't really get it, but so Harmony patch, and then we give it the type of, and then here in this bracket is the object type that we're modifying. So if we're doing a low gravity mod, we're modifying the player controller. Nice, and it's yelling at us about harmony patch. So we right click it, quick actions and refactoring and use harmony lib and it goes away. All right. Do we need another line here, harmony patch. So inside of these, these brackets here, we want to put the actual method uh, name that we're modifying. So here we're going to be modifying the update method. So just like that. Now we need to create our uh, class that does the work. Public class, uh, we'll call it patch, that's fine. So we need to actually get the variables from this thing. Uh, it doesn't kind of magically happen. We need to do some things here. <laughs> so uh, let me write out some code here and then I'll go over it. Okay, this is a lot of code. So uh, first we're declaring a variable called gravity uh, and we're saying that it's of this type. 
So this part, uh, you just need, and it's just kind of an object that references data that's somewhere else, I guess. Uh, the first object in this set is the player controller, uh, which is the object that we're modifying. So if you're modifying the flashlight or something, you want to put the flashlight here. And then this is the data type of the object that we are looking at specifically. So gravity is actually a float type. And then we rewrite it out again uh, with field ref axis instead of field ref. And then here at the very end, we put parentheses and quotes and then the actual variable name as it appears here. A method that actually does what we want it to do. So static bool, I'm gonna call this prefix. And then we want the data type that we're modifying, which we have quite a lot. And we're going to call it underscore underscore instance. Oh. So this basically just says um, that we want to grab the instance from the game. <laughs> so we need to actually load that value into our program here. So var g. Uh, just a new variable so gravity this is uh, you're creating a new variable and then you're saying equal to whatever you have happening here <laughs> whatever this variable is called in this long string here and then you pass it your instance just like that so then uh, you could do whatever you want with G so you could change the value of it and it will change it in game so g equals 10 f so if you look at gravity in this program which is the actual base game gravity is set to 10 or gravity is set to 20 so if we set it to 10 um it will be halved i guess uh, we could play around with different variables here and since this is a boolean function we just need to return true. Cool. So this is all you need to do. <laughs> There's a lot of things happening here, but um, this isn't a lot of lines of code. Um, and if you all you want to do is like change um, a variable or something like this. For example, if we go to the defibrillator, you could see here's some variables you could change the maximum amount of charge you could change, the attack force, so um, like if you hit an enemy with it, something like what what would that do? Um, a lot of this too, you, there isn't like solid documentation on, so you could kind of just play around with it, see what happens. Uh, that's a lot of how modding happens. <laughs> uh, shock, or there's the shop. So here's the hat shop. <laughs> Um, some of this is definitely a little more complicated and you kind of have to understand how Unity works, how C Sharp works, and also um, just take a lot of time to read into it. To compile this, uh, all we need to do in this screen is press Control B, then wait a second, it should say one build succeeded. If it didn't succeed, uh, you probably have some errors you want to look into. So now, if you open uh, File Explorer here, you'll see low gravity, and then you could go to bin, debug, and uh, here you go. You have lowgravity.dll, which is exactly what you need. So here's where you want to go back to your content warning. All right, so in order to do this correctly, you need to go to your main content warning folder and then create a new folder in the, the base here called plugins and then create another folder. And then you need to put your DLL that you built along with an image for the Steam Workshop. So then you open up the game and then go to your mod manager and you should see it here. This gives you your path and then you can publish it to the workshop, whatever. Let's test it out. There's a few things to note that needed to be changed in order to make this actually work. 
Uh, so uh, first of all, you need a reference to uh, your instance here. So it should look like, like this where you have your reference and then you have uh, the object that you're trying the data type of the object or object type um, and then instance. You should also add this before your function here, harmony postfix or uh, should line up. Uh, you can really call this whatever. I think uh, it depends on this tag here. So for some reason it wasn't picking up this. So you could either put harmony postfix or harmony prefix. Um, it'll add it either before or after the method. And then um, instead of assigning a variable and then trying to change that variable, you have to just modify the instance of itself. And uh, I think that's it. So see when you go into content warning, you pull up your mod manager and then your mod should be here. It should tell you uh, there's the path, publish it to the workshop if you want. So if you load into a game, hey, you'll see gravity is pretty low. <laughs> oh, it does make the game kind of hard to play when, you know, <clears throat> flopping over. I honestly don't know if this will work with uh, multiple people, but I assume so. Uh, you might need to have everyone else's Solus mod as well. Uh, but if you upload it to the workshop, it's uh, really easy to get your friends to install it. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That's making a content warning mod. <laughs>